Jay Ramey here. Jay Ramey, attorney at law, coming to you from the Know Your Rights Bunker in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I am an attorney here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, I am licensed to practice law in Oklahoma. I'm licensed to practice law in Kansas, but I don't do cases in Kansas, so don't call me think I'm going to go do a case in Kansas. Uh, I'm licensed to practice law in the federal court for the Northern District of Oklahoma, and I'm licensed to practice law in two tribal courts, the Cherokee Nation and the Muscogee Creek Nation. Uh, we had the big McGirt decision come down, I don't know, about a year or so ago, so I've been getting a lot of cases out of the, the two tribal uh, jurisdictions that kind of covered the Tulsa area, uh, Muscogee Nation and Creek Nation. Any, I, I'm sorry, Muscogee Nation and Cherokee Nation. Anyway, let's get on with uh, this is episode 19 of Know Your Rights. We call this the best way to handle a police encounter. Oh, and by the, I want to say one more thing, one more housekeeping thing. Ever since I've been doing these videos, I've been having trouble with, with YouTube, with the music. I always put like some introduction music at the beginning of the video and at the end, and it's, and it's supposed to be fair use. It's supposed to be called fair. It is called fair use. I know that for a fact. It's called fair use. It's not supposed to be a problem, but it's been a problem with YouTube. Off and on. Well, anyway, I, I found out, and I don't know how long it was blocked, episode 19, uh, episode 18 of Know Your Rights was, it was 100% completely blocked. Nobody could watch, well, except me, I could watch it. So I didn't know it was blocked. Anyway, so somebody told me it's blocked, so I had to go in there, tinker with it, and make it mute all the music, and then it, it came back online. So, what I'm going to do from now on, there's YouTube on their uh, website has some music, and I think my video editing software has some music too, some free music that you can use for your introduction and end, and uh, it won't get you blocked or anything like that. There won't be any copyright problems. So, we're going to, uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to have fun listening to, like, uh, on episode 18, it was Ronnie James Dio. I like Ronnie James Dio. Anyway, we're not going to be able to listen to any, any of that anymore. I'm going to get some generic, silly, it'll probably be silly sounding music. Uh, but I don't want any more problems with YouTube. Now, let's get on with the best way to handle a police encounter. That's what this episode's called. And what is the best way to handle a police encounter? I've mentioned this many, many, many times over the years. What is the best way to handle a police encounter? To not have a police encounter in the first place. That's the best way to have a police encounter. Don't have a police encounter. Stay away from the police. Avoid them at all costs. Don't give them the opportunity to violate your rights. All right? So, a couple weeks ago, as I record this, it's July 9th, and this post was back in June. And we're going to look at that here in a minute. Uh, on Facebook, a friend of mine, a Facebook friend, as well as she was a former client, I know her dad as well, she had posted this official post from the Tulsa Police Department uh, Facebook page. With, and she made a, kind of a little negative comment about it. And, but it was, come down and have coffee with a cop. At Starbucks here, here in Tulsa, you will you can meet some police officers and talk to them. Oh, great times. Wonder, I'm like, no, it's not great times. We don't want a police encounter. We do not want police encounters. We want to stay away from the police. We don't want to talk to them. We don't want to have anything to do with them. Then they don't have, if, if, if you can stay away from them, they don't have the opportunity to violate your rights. So I shared that post on Facebook with a, with a comment, which I don't even, even remember exactly what I said, but we're going to look at it here in a minute. I said, no, we don't want to have coffee with the cop. We want to stay away from the cop. That's the way, best way to handle a police encounter. Oh, my God. Some some of the cops, sycophants, went absolutely crazy about that post. They came out of the pits of boiling raw sewage that they live in to post on my Facebook page about how terrible I am and I'm uh, hateful. And, and We're going to look at the post here in a minute. It's, it's, I don't know where they get all this hate and stuff from. Anyway, well, so... A while back, I bought this software that allows me to record what's on my computer screen, and I was going to use it for some videos, and I never got around to it. So, boom, now is the perfect chance to use it. So, we're going to look at that Facebook post. We're going to look at the comments. We're going to look. I'm gonna, well, I've already done it. I've already made that video where I record it straight from the screen. And we're going to, well, look, why don't I just stop talking about it? Let's just get right to it. Here's the Facebook post I made with my additional comments plus the comments some of these people made. Let's go take a look. Okay, so here's the post from the Tulsa Police Department that I shared. A uh, picture of evidently some police officers in Starbucks. And down here in Tulsa Police Department, 
This came out on June 22nd. I shared it the next day. Coffee with a cop. Come see us this morning. No, I don't want to. You know, so in, like around Christmas time, they'll, they'll do this, uh, you know, taking kids out shopping with a cop and whatever. Or, you know, you'll see that, you know, coffee with the cops. Sometimes they'll do it at McDonald's and stuff. What, you know, whatever. We'll be at Starbucks 71st Memorial for coffee with the cop. Come interact with some, with some of the officers. No, I don't want to interact with them. I do not want a police encounter. None of us should want a police encounter. Or you might catch a few working the drive through We hope to see you there. You ain't going to see me there. So, that's what I shared. Now, what, what did I say that was just so terrible and hateful and, and just, just over the top? Why would any rational human being want to interact with a cop? Yeah, I, if you don't want your rights violated, if you don't want to get beaten up, shot, and then hauled off the jailhouse, and then have the cops come lie about what you did. Who in the hell wants a police encounter? Who wants a police encounter? Again, the best way to handle a police encounter is not to have a police encounter in the first place. We need to stay away from the police. We do. Civilians in Ukraine do not want to have encounters with Russian soldiers. They want to stay. Hell, most of them have fled the country so they don't have a encounter with the rights-violating, iron-fisted, authoritarian Russian soldiers. If you were in lived in Poland in 1940 and you were walking down the road and you saw the SS down down the street corner, would you want to go interact with them and? And have a coffee with them? Hell no! You'd turn around and walk away. Stay away from them. You know, the police are the brothers of the Russian soldiers. They're the, you know, the the SS and Poland was their predecessors. They, 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 these are what they want to do. They want to do the same thing. All these people are doing: violate your rights, beat you down, kill you lie about you, and then haul you off and lock you in a cage. What I said here was what any rational, normal, competent, experienced, learned criminal defense attorney would say. And if we, we find ourselves, ourselves in a police encounter, we, we find ourselves in a police encounter, right. oh need, my God, oh God, we can't have that. Highlight it. Hateful. If we find That's ourselves in a police well, encounter, we need to assert our rights. Oh my God. Oh, yeah, God, we can't First have one, that. Cindy Blaylock. Hateful. That's Stop just hateful. the hate. Let's look at the comments. What is the hate? Yeah, here we go. First one, Cindy Blaylock. What is Blaylock the hate? Clark. Stop Cindy the hate. Cindy Blaylock Clark? What Tell me, is the hate? Who called for help? You know, I, what is you, the hate? You've heard that. I've heard that. Cindy over Blaylock over Clark? On my Facebook page. Tell me, who would you call for help? When I, you know, when I tell you know, people I, about we, their We've heard that. I've heard that. Over and so, over and over on my Facebook Let's say we, we we have a mass shooting here at the know your rights and tell people about, about I call the police for help. So of course I got plenty let's of say guns we, that are we have a mass shooting here at the know your rights. But, but never mind. I call the police for I call the police for help and they show up of course, and they I got standing outside for thirty, 30 minutes, minutes talking. I, I would help no, myself no, first. Seventy minutes. Never mind I don't know. I'm trying to remember. I call the police for help and they show up and they stand outside for thirty minutes talking before they help it. Seventy minutes. But let's say I don't remember what happened in Uvalde, Texas. I think it was seventy minutes. I had to call the police for to come do an accident before they help. I've been in an accident a couple of But let's say I do that the police and, or they have to come they i've had to, to call the police for so you can turn uh, in come do an action okay the, the police did that they showed up took a report why does that resolve absolve them of all the wrongdoing that they do day in and day out in this country they violate people's rights they lie in court they beat people for sport they're violent thugs why? Because I had to call them to come do an accident report. Absolved. We had a Tulsa police officer who raped a woman. He just got arrested like four, five, six days ago. Raped a woman. But no, they're all res uh, they're all absolved from all their wrongdoing because Cindy Blaylock Clark and other people say, "Tell me who would you call for help?" I back the blue. Oh God, Lord. Stacy Stokes, I'm dating a volunteer officer. Well, I, I feel sorry for you, Stacy. And again, it's a volunteer officer, but, but let's talk about that. What why do people want to be a volunteer officer? Why would they why would why do they want to go do this and not get paid? You know, they go they go work their 40 hours a week at their normal job, and then they go out and work hours and hours as a volunteer officer. 
well, it's obvious. They want that badge and that gun and that power. And they want to go out and, and, and tell, violate people's rights and tell them, with the, I'm the police and you're going to obey my command just the way it's going to be. And I'm going to put you in the jailhouse because you got a dried plant in your pocket. You know? But anyway, as we, as we know, police officers are they're very well known for domestic domestic violence uh and, and it's obvious why that is they go out and they work their eight hour shift they by god you're gonna do what i say you're gonna follow my command if you don't i'm gonna beat you down with my billy stick haul you up to jail well then they go home and nothing's changed they go tell their wife their girlfriend you do what i say you'll be my command and the woman smarts off to him i ain't baying you and then well boom smacked in the face because they're violent. They're violent thugs. They're not, they're not going to listen to their wife or girlfriend back talk them. Anyway. And, and here we go. I also know there's bad in every culture, religion, and career, and race. Okay. These people are given a badge and a gun. They're unleashed on the citizens of the community. They can do anything they want. They can kill them for not obeying commands. They can lie and make up something to arrest you for and take you down to the jail. And even if they're not lying, even if they actually caught you with a dried plant, they will take you down to the jailhouse and lock you in a cage. What kind of person with a conscience would lock you in a cage because you had a dried plant in your pocket? But So we can't have bad in their in their career we can't have bad in the police department you know we all know this few bad apples is just a bunch of crap but we can't even have a few bad apples in the police department because they're given a badge and again they can do anything they want and so they go out and violate our rights lie in court you know whatever i don't want to hear about there's dead in every you know i'm not given a badge and gun and unleashed on the, on the people of my community. I'm trying to protect people's rights. All right. Jennifer Espinoza. Now, I've read this a couple times. This is one big, long, run-on sentence. There's no periods at the end of the sentence. No capital. You don't know where a sentence begins and ends. And this is the people who support the police. This shows you how educated they are. The police supporters, they can't even write a coherent paragraph. Why y'all so negative on cops? Not all are bad. You know, we, uh, I just addressed that with the last comment. We're all human beings. They have a job just like the rest of y'all. But y'all don't know what they deal with on a certain basis. I thought coffee with a cop was a good idea. My son wanted to go, but I was busy that day and couldn't make couldn't make my kids think cops are cool, and I want it to stay that way. Okay, whatever, that's terribly written. Now, she says, y'all. Now, sometimes I, I get these comments that are, you, why are you so negative about the cops, Jamie? Why, why do you hate the cops so bad? Did you have a negative experience with the police once? I'm like, what are these people not getting? Do they even read who's writing this? It's J.K. Ramey. Criminal defense attorney. I didn't have a bad experience with a police officer once. I have had bad experiences with police officers every day of my professional life for the past 20 years. As a criminal defense attorney. Day in and day out. That's all I do. I read the reports, or shall I say lies. I, I read the reports. I watch their videos. Dash cam video, body cam video, the, the videos they made at the police station where they questioned my client who waived all of his rights most of the time. I, I, my, the, the, the clients come in here to hire him. I hear their stories. You know, I call them victims, the victims of the police violating their rights, lying about them. I, this is what I do every single day of my professional life. It's that experience, 20 years of that, knowing how the cops violate our rights, lie. They're violent. They hurt people for fun. 
That's why I'm so negative on cops. But I'm not even, this post, I'm not even negative. I'm just saying how to protect your rights. We're all human beings. They have a job, just like the rest of y'all. No, they don't have a job. Like They're given a badge and a gun, and they're unleashed on the public, and they can do anything they want. I don't have a badge and gun, and I'm not unleashed on the, on the citizens of my community to do anything I want. My job is to try to protect people's rights, not to violate them. You see, these people like Jennifer Espinosa, oh, she knows it all. She knows it all. Even though I got 20 years of experience as a criminal defense attorney, going down to the courthouse every day, dealing with the police, dealing with their, what they've written in police reports, reading their lies in police reports, listening to them testify, not testify, but testify in court. This I've been doing it every day for 20 years. But people like Jennifer, oh, they, they know it all better than me because they, they had coffee with a cop once whatever, you know, whatever. Uh, oh, here we go. Janet Helm. Well, I won't be calling him if I'm in trouble. Okay. Seriously. Okay. So who are you going to call? And, and, and call, well, first of all, first of all, Janet Helm, you're a cop sycophant. Why would you ever need a defense attorney. Why would you ever get in trouble? You're obedient, aren't you? But let's say you did get in trouble. You don't want a criminal defense attorney who gives good legal advice, how to protect your rights, that's going to protect, that is going to protect your rights during your case, that's going to do everything he can to help you against the police. He's going to be on your side and not the police. That's not what Janet wants because she won't be calling me. She'll call the criminal defense attorney who tells her to waive all her rights with the police, who will tell her the police were completely right in everything they did, who will go to court, and when it's his turn to get up to cross-examine the police officer, he will get up and say, well, well, Mr. Officer, thank you for telling the truth. I'm, I'm glad you arrested my client. I have no, no, no further questions, Your Honor. That's who Jennifer wants, or Janet. That's who Janet Helm wants if she gets in trouble. That's who she'll call. Again, what I, the advice I give and the, the advice I give about the best way to handle the police encounter is not to have one at all. That's any, any criminal defense attorney, competent, well-learned criminal defense attorney would say the same thing. Now, I know there's some, you know, maybe she'd call one of these ex-prosecutors whose buddies are the cops. You know, maybe that's who she would want if she got in trouble. Oh, here we go. Tressa Deerman. I back the blue. There's bad players on every team. Don't let the bad, you know, again... We can't afford to have a bad apple in the police department. He's given a badge and a gun and the authority to do whatever he wants to you. But here's here's something funny about good old Tressa. I looked at her, her Facebook page, and let's look at something that she posted. This is Tressa Dearman's page. What does the government do once it once it has its... Once it has disarmed its citizens, whatever, well, that's what the cops do right now. They do whatever they want. But, Tressa, why do we want to be armed? To protect ourselves from government more than anything. And, and who is it in the government we want to be protected from? Government's henchmen, the police. Now, I, obviously, she, she don't want to live, according to this post, she don't want to live in Cuba. She don't want to live in a police state. But that's what she's saying because she backs the blue. I back the blue. There's bad players on every team. Well, she doesn't get it. She posts something like this. But she doesn't get it. Who is going to do whatever they want to you? If they take your guns. The police. The henchmen of the government. Let's look at something else Tressa posted. Oh, what's this woman's name? Lauren Bobert. Now, she's she's batshit crazy. Congresswoman from Colorado. She's out of her mind. But what does it say down here? Our rights are not gifts from the government. Well, I've said that many times. And I've talked about the importance of our rights. The best way to assert our rights... When I have any police encounter, is to not have a police encounter at all. Then you don't have to worry about it. 
Trez is worried about our rights as far as saying our rights are not gifts from the government. But I watched most of this video of Lauren Boebert, her, her little talk here, and almost everything she talked about, about the only thing she talked about was guns, the right to guns. I mean, which is fine. I believe I believe in the right to self-defense, Second Amendment, that's fine. But these people like her that support the police, they think that's the only right in the Bill of Rights. That's the only right they're concerned with is the right to guns. The Fourth Amendment, you know, you, you tell the police officer, no, you can't search my car. You don't talk to a police officer that How dare you talk to a police officer that way? You, your right to not talk to the police, to uh, invoke your right to remain silent and request an attorney. They, they don't even know that exists. People like Tressa Dearman don't, don't even know that exists in the Bill of Rights. All they know about is the right to go on the Second Amendment. I, I just think that's just hysterical. So, Tressa Dearman, let's... Uh, Oh, yeah. Then don't call them if you need help. Well, I don't need their help. I don't need their violation of my rights. I don't need them to come beat me up. I don't need them to haul me off to jail based on some kind of lie. So I don't call them. I, again, I've had to call them a couple times in my life, mainly a couple traffic accidents, because you you have to have the police come do a police report. That, again, that doesn't mean that my advice is going to change and tell people, oh, yeah, go have a police, march up to the police and say, hello, officer, here's my weed in my pocket. <laughs> Whatever. Joanne Metz. Are you serious, dude? Yes, I'm serious. I'm very serious. You need to turn in your law license then. Here, let me, let me highlight that. What? That doesn't even make any sense. You need to turn in your law license. Okay. Again, I'm not some rogue, crazy attorney coming up with just crazy stuff. Any criminal offense attorney would tell you what I've told you about your rights, about the best way to have police encounters, not have one at all, stay away from the police. So why would I need to turn in my law license? This is right. This stuff I talk about is right out of the Constitution. Knowing your rights, asserting your rights with the police. This doesn't even make sense. You need to turn your law license. This woman doesn't even have a clue. Because it's obvious you aren't after justice, but to let criminals off. What? What does that even mean? I am after justice. I am for protecting our constitutional rights, our basic human rights against the violations from the police. That's justice. That is justice. To let criminals off. Well, you know, do I let criminals off when some cop lies, goes to court and lies about about what happened? You know, I I got a case. I went to court on a when all these comments were coming through. I was going to court that day and I was looking at them uh, just before I was going in court because I had time to kill from in court. Some woman got arrested on a bogus DUI marijuana case. She she got pulled over from some stupid traffic violation. I, I think her her tag was out by just a couple weeks. Gets pulled over, and she's got her wallet open. The cop sees that medical marijuana license in her car. Here, it come, here comes the question. When did you last smoke marijuana? And, of course, as I've told people, you need to search your rights, and say, I'm not answering any questions. I want to talk to an attorney. But unfortunately, she said earlier today, which was before she went to work. It's now eight hours later. Oh, well, we need to pull you out and do some field sobriety tests then. It's eight hours later. And then he lies and says she's failed the field sobriety test. Those field sobriety tests are made only for alcohol. To see if you're impaired on alcohol. And it's questionable whether they can actually detect that. But they're not made to detect impairment by marijuana. There are no field sobriety tests that have been studied to show impairment by marijuana. But he lies and says she failed the test. And then, to make it even worse, she had a little baby. She just picked up her baby after uh, getting off work. So now she's charged with DUI and felony child endangerment because she had a baby in her car based on the lies of some cop. 
And yet, I'm not after justice. I just want to let criminals off. Police officers are some of the best people around. Like this cop that arrested my client just because he saw a medical marijuana card in her in her wallet. She wasn't under an influence. It had been hours since she smoked weed. And he lied about her failing the field sobriety test. But no, police officers are some of the best people around. Especially when you get charged with a felony because of their lies. Joanne Mintz. That's it. That is all the comments I wanted to go through. But let, let's just look at this again. Why would any rational human being want to interact with a cop? Who the hell wants a police encounter? What is so hateful, so terrible about this? It's just normal, straightforward legal advice that any criminal defense attorney would give to somebody. We don't want encounters with the police. All right? So that's it. Let's go back to the video of my charming and beautiful, handsome face. All right, we're back to my beautiful, handsome, charming face. I'm sure y'all missed seeing my face while we looked at, uh, looked at the Facebook post there for a while. Now, let's just talk about something real quick and then we'll get out of here. I'm sure all of you have seen I hope all of you have seen all of my videos, but episode 13, I do a interview with Joe DeSalvo, the sheriff of Pitkin County, Colorado, which is the Aspen. Aspen is the county seat. And some of you may say, well, well Amy, you went and did an interview with him, and you, you uh, socialized with him. Now, it's like I've said, I don't know how many times I've said this. I, I, I go to the, the normal Aspen Legal Seminar. I've gone there for years and years. Every year they have a seminar. It was canceled twice for COVID, and then the last one was a big debacle, and I didn't go to that. I'll probably go next year. But anyway, I went for years and years and years. When you go to Aspen, Colorado, it's like you have entered a different universe. It's like you're, you've left this world, and you're on another planet a gazillion light years away. Everything's different there, including Ch Sheriff DeSalvo and the sheriff before him, and probably the sheriff before him. I don't know. Some of you may know uh, Hunter S. Thompson a long time ago, like in the 70s, ran for sheriff, and I think that's when they had a bad sheriff there. Anyway, getting off subject. The sheriff is cool. He came and gave opening remarks at, at the seminar once. Well, he, more than once. He's done it several times. Now, sometimes I miss the opening remarks because you don't get credit for it. And sometimes you get in late and you, and you want you got to get some sleep. So you miss the opening remarks, which are like 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. So he may have given open opening remarks before that I missed. But he gave these opening remarks. and I, I, He's real cool. And then we have these dinners. and At, at, at these dinners, everyone's smoking weed. Everyone's drinking. And there's the sheriff. <laughs> I mean, I got lined to get dinner, and he ended up right next to me. And he said a few things. That, you know, oh, you're the, you're the sheriff. I should just say, oh, yeah, how you doing? Good to see you. And, uh, you know, we got dinner. I, I didn't see him. And I, I mean, I've seen him around some of the other events, but I didn't really, like, sit down and spend a lot of time with him. But my point is, he's there at the normal legal seminar where everyone's smoking weed and, and drinking and, and he talked about how he, and I'm sure he still smokes weed, but he's talked, I, certainly I've heard him talk about how he smoked weed when he first came to Aspen. And then he talks about how when he was coming up in the sheriff's department, you know, when he first started, like in the 70s, they didn't care about marijuana. If they didn't make arrests for marijuana, it was just overlooked, you know, move on. And if they caught someone smoking marijuana, well, just move on. Anyway, it's, like I said, complete different universe in Aspen, Colorado. The sheriff is cool. I assume his deputies are cool. I, mean, I don't know any of them, but if the sheriff's cool, you know, his deputies got to be cool. But I've said this a number of times, if, especially for those of you that live around Tulsa and Rogers County, which is the next, one of the next counties over. There's Who's our sheriff here in, in Tulsa County? Joe, uh, not Joe, just Dick Vigorado, Vic Rigolato, whatever his name is. And then there's this real mean sheriff uh, who hates marijuana. Uh, in Rogers County, and I now I oh Scott Walton, Scott Walton, he hates marijuana. Could you imagine these two guys showing up at the normal legal seminar dinner where everyone's drinking, smoking weed? <laughs> yeah, they show up all right. They show up with a platoon of their their deputies and a paddy wagon with their billy stick, and they'd be beating everyone down and hauling them off to the paddy wagon. That, yeah. it, again, it's not like 
It's not like that. So in Aspen, Colorado. So yes, I guess they're an, an exception to every rule. If there is some cop who's cool, like like Joe DeSalvo in, in Pitkin County, Colorado, yeah, maybe you would socialize with them. I have socialized with them, and, and I did a whole interview with them, which is episode 13 of Know Your Rights. All right, that's it. Enough talking. Let's get out of here. Uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Remember, if you ever... It, the, again, the best way to have a police encounter is not have a police encounter in the first place. Stay away from the police. But if you find yourself, and, and because, if, you know, you get pulled over, they end up on your doorstep, or, you know, you just couldn't avoid them. If you have a police encounter that you couldn't avoid, do not, do not waive your rights when you have that police encounter. Always, a week, listen to my voice, always assert your sacred constitutional rights when you're having a police encounter. And if you do not know them, then go back and watch, especially episode one of this series of Know Your Rights. That's the three big things you know about your rights. It's all right there in 20 minutes. If you do nothing else, just watch that video. But everyone, every man, woman, child in the United States of America, Europe, Japan, South America, they should watch every single one of my videos probably at least oh, once a week at least I would say. All right, anyway, let's get out of here. We'll talk to you guys later. We'll see ya. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm spitting everywhere. We'll see you guys next time. All right, bye.